Hi guys and welcome back to your processing series. Now, I'll be sorry to disappoint, but I've been looking at whether we would be able to implement the balls colliding against each other, and I've come to the conclusion that it might not be a good idea to implement that. The first reason why it might not be a good idea is because the maths in it are reasonably complicated, and um, that means that I would have to explain all the maths behind that so that you guys could understand how the ball collision works. And I myself haven't done math for a long time. That's uh, unfortunate, but true. And also explaining that here through a computer is not particularly easy for me to do. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is it's not easy to do it well. Meaning there are physics libraries out there that will do um, sphere and circle collisions perfectly without a problem. But those libraries have been developed over a number of years and have an, a, a lot of contributors and a lot of people who know what they're doing very well. This is not the case with us. So we could implement it, the ball collision, in a way that it kind of works, but that doesn't really work very well. And then balls get stuck to one another or disappear on the sides of the screen and things like that. So I thought might as well just skip that, do something else that maybe doesn't need as many maths, but can instead introduce you guys to more processing concepts. So hopefully that'll be okay with you. Um, and instead we can we can do something a bit more uh, focused towards learning about processing as opposed to learning about maths. If you really are interested in the uh, physics aspect of it, there's going to be a link below the video on a tutorial that will introduce you to the circle and circle collision and that does not work very well. Later on, if you are interested in doing it properly, you may want to transition from using processing into full-blown Java and using an, an appropriate physics library. I've done that in the past with some of the games and, and that works a lot better and it's a lot easier to do as well because you don't have to do anything. The, the physics library does it all for you. So, what we can do instead is do something with the mouse. So whenever we click the mouse, something is going to happen. For example, in this video we can try to implement something that will change the color of the ball depending on whether the mouse was clicked on it or not. So, when we click the mouse on a ball, it's going to change to red, and if the ball is already red, it's going to change to green, and vice versa. So this should be a fairly simple thing to do. However, the first thing we're going to need is the ball to store its own color. So I'm going to go over to the ball class here and I'm going to store a private color. Sorry, not that. Without a capital C. So private color um, and then the name ball color. And this is going to be equal to color, and then between the brackets, we have to specify the number of red, green, and blue um, amounts. So if we want the ball to be initially, say, red, we'll say 255 reds, zero greens, and zero blues. And that way, the ball would be fully red. If we were to specify the zero reds, 255 greens, and zero blues, the ball would be green, obviously, and you can mix around those numbers as you wish. Okay, and then the all, all other thing we have to do is say, um, not there, sorry, in here, the display method that is here, we're going to have to say um, fill this ball color. And then this will fill the ellipse in red like so. And there you go. So now all the ellipses are red, which is excellent. And now what we have to do is be able to change the color of one ellipse when we press the mouse inside it. So in order to do that, we're going to need a method in the ellipse that will check for whether the point that we've clicked the mouse on is inside the ellipse or not. So what we're going to do is create a public boolean 
mouse in ellipse, or rather point in ellipse. And then this is going to take an int x, int y. This is going to be the position of the mouse in x and y. However, this could be any point, not just the mouse. That's why I've called the point in ellipse and not just mouse in ellipse. And then what we have to do is say that the distance between the mouse position and the center of the sphere is less than the radius of the sphere. So we're going to apply some Pythagoras' theorem. If you are unfamiliar with this, um, that's fine. It's fairly simple. So I'm going to create a variable called distance of type double, and this is going to be equal to the square root of the distance between the center of the sphere and the mouse position, and the um, also the uh, center of the sphere in y and the mouse position in y. So to the square root of x, which is the mouse position, minus get x, which is the sphere's x position, and this, all of that has to be um, done uh, to the power of 2, so that can be done with math.pow. Um, and I'm actually going to say not that, that x minus get x has to go to the power of 2, like so. And then to that, we have to add math.pow, and that is y minus get y to the power of 2 as well. Uh, and there you go. So this is the distance between the this point x and y that we've passed this method and the x and y positions of the sphere. As I said, you can look up the Pythagoras theorem for how this is calculated. It's really fairly simple. Um, and you should have no problem at all with that. And then if this distance is less than the radius of the sphere, and gets size divided by 2, then we return true. And if not, we return false. And then this is our method. OK. If we then go to our main sketch file, we are going to go and create another void method called mouse pressed. And this mouse pressed method gets called automatically by processing whenever we press the mouse. Therefore, this is the ideal place to do any sort of uh, mouse related operations. There are a couple of other methods, such as mouse clicked or mouse released, I think, that get called in different circumstances. Mouse pressed gets called as soon as you press the mouse. Mouse clicked gets called when you press and then release the mouse, for example. You can use either of them, it doesn't really matter. And then in this mouse pressed method, we have to iterate over the balls list. And then what we do in each of these is if the um, balls i contains point in ellipse, the method we just created, mouse x, mouse y, then we can do something about that. Um, in this case, it would be to change the color of the ellipse. So we would say balls i dot um, change color, for example. And now we have to go into our ball class and create another method to change the color public void change color. And what we'll see is um, if this dot, I think it's called ball color, ball color is red, which we can do by saying like so. So if 
this bold colored red element, which is um, the first of these, is equal to 255, which it should be initially, then we can say this bold color equals color 0, 0, 255, sorry, 0, 255, 0, to make it green. And if it is not, then we can say this ball color equals color 25500. Zero, zero. So what it is going to do is if the color is red, it's going to change it to green. And if it is not red, then it's going to change it to red. So let's see if that works. Well, it seems like it does, if I manage to press on that one. And there are some of our balls now turning red and green. Excellent. And I appreciate you may not have been able to see that very well, so I'm going to move it over. And there you go. So, this was a bit of a longer video, but it has introduced you into what um, the mouse can do for you and this mouse pressed method. And also a bit of the maths uh, behind how we can get the distance between two elements uh, using Pythagoras' theorem, which is, as I said, uh, fairly simple. You can look that up if you are unsure of what that means. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was interesting. And what we might do in the next video is to add the ability to add more balls onto a program dynamically as we press the mouse. So I'll see you there.